Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, looking at this uh, Panasonic 3DO again. Um, so the problem with it this time is the uh, audio is crackling and it potentially goes really, really badly actually in game. Um, I thought maybe it was a CD audio, but it's not. It's any audio at all. Um, it can be all right sometimes for the first minute or two, and then it just gets really, 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 really crackly, um, as I've shown at the end of my previous 3DO video here. So. Um, yeah, four screws to get them out, you get the lid off rather, you can see sort of, yeah, the four screws, dead easy. Um, and then the CD the CD drive, you've got four screws, um, various points there. It's probably a good idea to slide this piece of shielding off so that you can disconnect the ribbon, two ribbons at the back, uh, and then the CD drive should come out. So once your CD drive's out, you want to get all these uh, screws from the shield in here that hold the board in as well. So there's various uh, screws all over the damn place, one back there, uh, one hidden under there. Make sure this is often disconnected from the mains as well while you're doing this because all this side here is going to be live. And when you're removing the CD drive, just watch you don't drop a screw down there, especially if it's, you don't want it plugged in. Because if a screw goes floating around there somewhere, you're going to damage it massive time, uh, big time. Uh, yeah, screw there, screw there, so yeah, and that's it. There's one or two holding the board and actually once you get the shielding off, so uh, we'll cover those in a sec. So there you go, it's an all-in-one board, power supply this end, uh, main logic in the middle and stuff here. So yeah, these are the two custom chips I talked about. You've got uh, Clio and Madam. Um, not sure what that is, VLSI. Um, oh, that's, that's an ARM processor, isn't it, I think. Um, yeah, video encoder. So, uh, regards audio, I suspect we're going to be looking around here, um, this area. I'm not sure whether that's going to be some sort of DAC. I mean, this is doing the video encoding, so it could be. This could be a DAC um, to be generate your composite. You've got this little JRC chip here, could be that, that could be an audio app amp, uh, I'm not sure. And then up here, no idea, it's just this expansion port presumably, that I think. Uh, yeah, not much going on there at all, and there's some, some RAM chips down here, Kyocera. Um, don't know those, 428C, 57J-7s, 79 seconds. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, what's that there? Looks like another. Uh, that's a ROM, I think. Yeah, that's a ROM. That's a RAM. Presumably video RAM or something. No idea. Could be backup RAM actually, because you've got the battery here. I suspect it probably is. Um, that's interesting. That's probably going to need swapping out. I've got one of those spare, so might do that while I'm there. I think. Um, and then of course your power supply caps. You know, could be one of these. So uh, I need to check. Uh, Check these caps out, I'll get them off and uh, measure them on the capacitance meter. Um, just give the board a bit of an inspection and stuff with the magnifying glass, but I will be paying close attention to certainly the power supply and this area here, I think. So I've had a good measure around on the board, um, couldn't find anything, but the spot of this cap, um, just near the power supply here, 10 microfarad, uh, well it's actually on the power supply, it's part of the power supply circuit. Um, it measures, I think, let me just check it, I'll show you what it measures. It's not far off 10, um, but it's very questionable, and I'll show you why. Uh, yeah, so you can see like 9.3, 9.4, it's a bit under. It's going up, which is curious in its own right. Could be that it was reverse charged, uh, but anyway, if I show you, uh, you can be able to see this. I'll try, try and zoom in, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get a focus on this, if at all. Um, da -da -da. Well, you can't see it, but basically, um, there's loads of like mulchy sort of stuff here. It's, uh, yeah, I can't get a focus on this. There's loads of stuff under there. It's like I don't know electrolyte or something that's leaked out. You've got a green, the pin's green. Um, there's like blacky, mucky sort of stuff underneath there. It's bizarre. It's like it's melted, perhaps. Um, and on the board, you can see what I've cleaned it up there. I'll see if I can zoom in on this. You might be able to see this a bit better. Um, Hopefully, don't get too too close. That's just about right. Yeah, you can see that pad there. It's looking a bit corroded. Um, yeah, I cleaned this up a bit, but it was much like that on the board with that green stuff there. So I think that cap might be the issue. So I'll swap that out and give it a try. So as you can hear, that's working fine. There was that cap. Sweet. So as you can see, it's working fine, or here I should say. Uh, it's been on for about 20 minutes now, no sound problems at all. So first instance, if you're getting weird problems um, with your CD drive, with crashing, lockups, um, 
if not reading discs and sound. Check out that those caps on the power supply because in my case I think the power supply, uh, the, sorry, the, the cap that I swapped out, that 10 microfarad, probably sits on the up the higher voltage line and what I mean by that is I haven't checked probably 9 volts or 12 volts or whatever it is that gets fed to the CD um, drive but it also ultimately probably goes to the um, audio perhaps the op amp or something the audio output um, and that's typical in these systems really you see um, you know sort of sometimes you'll get plus 12 volts minus 12 volts um, just provided for the audio output stage um, or it, it might not be as high as that, it might be plus 9 volts, minus 9 volts, or you know, even just plus 9 volts or something, or plus 12 volts. Um, and I think that was the case, so there's just two, two faults with this really. Um, and I suspect that that power supply issue with the cap there was probably affecting the drive as well, because since I swapped that cap out, it's reading discs absolutely perfectly now. Um, whereas previously, just occasionally when you first switched it on, it would spit the disc straight back out, and you put it back in, and then it'd be okay, and it'd be you know it'd be okay. So I, I do think that that's uh, there was two faults with this: the uh, the cap on the power supply there for the uh, the voltage going to the audio op amp or the audio output stage, I should say, really, uh, and the uh, CD drive, um, and it's probably affecting the CD drive as well. But uh, yeah, and it needed a new laser, obviously. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.